This is a joint work with uh, Jeff uh, Dudek from uh, Rice University. And uh, what I am going uh, to talk about is basically about uh, uh, the mechanism of manipulation as solution space of uh, Boolean function that uh, described as Boolean formulas for uh, certain properties, in this case of uh, counting. So, as uh, you know, uh, counting uh, the number of uh, solutions of a Boolean formula is a, a very important problem and it can be found in uh, software engineering networks, uh, machine learning. Only a few days ago there was a, a very good talk here that uh, ties counting uh, to a network, uh, neural network verification and machine learning. But uh, counting is also a very uh, hard problem. So the decision problem variant of uh, giving a formula and a number, whether uh, the number of solutions of the formula is bigger or smaller than the number, it's basically uh, uh, p to the sharp p hard, which means it is in a complexity class that it is indeed contained in p space, but contains the polynomial hierarchy, and this is basically taught the theorem from uh, 91. But uh, although we have this theorem, there is little that we know about uh, the world of uh, complexity classes. And so we can always keep asking ourselves whether the complexity of the polynomial hierarchy, the complexity of counting, can be brought down. So in this talk, I want to look at uh, another angle to reason about uh, the complexity of uh, counting. And uh, I'm going to use it by manipulating the uh, assignment space of uh, Boolean uh, uh, functions that describe this Boolean formulas. And uh, for that, I'm going to define the concept of uh, transformations. And uh, first, I'm going to formalize exactly what it is. Then I'm going to show some nice combinatorial properties of transformation that allows us to play with the solution space. And eventually, I'm going to bring uh, uh, the transformation conjecture that basically says that uh, if there exists such a polynomial size transformation between every two formulas, then uh, complexity of counting can uh, be brought down um, to somewhere in some level in the polynomial hierarchy. So I will start. Uh, okay, a Boolean formula. So a Boolean formula, we have over uh, n uh, Boolean variables. And uh, let's fix this number n for uh, a fee for the rest of the talk. And we have our Boolean connectives, uh, and or, and negation, and so on. And uh, let's also assume that we have an order of the variables that xn is the most significant bit and uh, uh, x1 is the least significant bit, such that uh, if we are talking about the assignment space of uh, the formula, then uh, that is the state of all possible uh, the, the space of all possible solutions, then we can describe it in a lexicographic order when uh, 0, 0, 0 is the top and 1, 1, 1 is the bottom. And uh, every Boolean formula is a set of solutions that the solution is just an assignment uh, to the variables for which uh, phi is uh, satisfied. So this is a quick example that uh, we have uh, uh, x1 or x2 and the assignment space is all possible uh, assignments. This is a uh, two to the n, in this case it is four. And the solutions here are, uh, uh, there are three solutions. Sharp uh, phi will uh, denote the number of solutions and the size of phi, basically it is the number of the symbols that uh, phi has. And as you can see here, for example, so we have uh, two solutions, two formulas, each one of them has different solution space. And the one to the left, it is uh, typical that the one and the zeros and then zeros and ones and so on. But the one to the right is uh, really much nicer. You see all the ones are uh, uh, being in one block and all the zeros are uh, uh, up. And uh, for that kind of solution space, counting is actually easy and it is, can be done in polynomial time by uh, simple binary search. So the question that is interesting to know whether we can somehow take phi and transform it into another formula, phi prime, that has a nice solution space uh, to count. So. I am going to uh, define the formalism in, to which we can pursue this question. So we have a formula that we call it the transformation formula. And what this is basically this. This is a quantified 
Boolean formula, the quantification there is important, that it has uh, two n free variables. Think of uh, domain x of size n and, and uh, uh, range i, range y of size n also, and basically describes a bijection from uh, uh, the solution space from uh, 0, 1 to the n to 0, 1 to the n. In that sense that uh, if a and b are assignment to x and y respectively, then uh, t of a, b is 1, if and only if g a equals b. And so this is the Boolean formula for transformation. And how we uh, apply the transformation to a given Boolean formula with only n variables. So what we do, we construct this following uh, formula. Below t of phi y basically exists x such that t x y and phi, uh, phi x, which basically means that uh, uh, if, uh, so see that t uh, phi of y also is as only n variables, same number of variables as x has, and t phi of y is true basically if uh, the x, the, there is a unique x because t is a bijection that sends x to y, for it phi x um, is true as well. So in that sense we have that uh, a is a solution to phi if and only if g of a g is the function that uh, t described, the bijection, is a solution to t phi. And uh, it is easy to see that since it is a bijection and all, then there is also a counting preservation such that uh, uh, the, the number of solutions that t phi has and the number of solutions that phi has are basically the same. So let's see some uh, nice examples. So first we have this plus transformation. And in this transformation, as you can see, this is basically a, a big formula that you can see below. I will not go into it, but it's basically it, uh, 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 the syntax of, of the operation plus. And we have uh, uh, existentially quantified inner variable disease that basically they uh, describe the carry that uh, we need for uh, to compute the plus. And as you can see for this uh, transformation, it basically shifts the solution space. It's so it shifts the um, solution space um, in some uh, a few ways up. So it basically just, just moves the solution space, but it keeps the same order of the variables. If you can see, I painted it in blue. So this zero moves to this zero, and all of the others are just, are just shifting. So it's kind of a rotation. And we can also think of another transformation that basically we just uh, permute the uh, variable, so here we just permuted x1 and x4, and if we apply to the formula x1 or x3, so we see that this formula x1 or x3, it is become uh, x4 of x3. See, for example, that uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, it uh, was transformed to 1, 0, 0, 0. So x4 uh, and x1 switched places. And same idea we can do with XOR. XOR is a bijection, therefore the operation XOR, therefore we can also have a transformation of that kind and so on. So let me describe some uh, nice algebraic properties of the transformations. And these properties are just follow up from the fact that T is a bijection. There is, uh, it's really simple. So uh, for example, T phi or uh, psi is logically equivalent this means that they have the same solution space of t phi or uh, t psi, same for uh, conjunctions and same for uh, denegation. And uh, maybe something more useful is that we can also do composition of transformation. So if we take um, two formulas, t1, t2, suppose they denote some uh, uh, Boolean functions g1 and g2, then we can construct a, a, a formula that basically describes the composition of g2 over uh, g1. So what it means, it means basically that uh, there exists z, so there is only one z, unique z because it's a bijection, that x, uh, t1 sends x to z and t2 sends z to y. And uh, along the same line, we also have the inverse transformation because T1, uh, because if we just change the um, image and the uh, domain, then what we get, we get the inverse, like, like uh, the inverse bijection of a bijection. And now let's see what we can have with it. So now we can uh, play with uh, the transformation and we can get some interesting things. 
for example, in this transformation that we called merge rotate. So the bottom part of, so it's a composition of transformation. The bottom part of the solution space, it just stays the same. It's the identity. But here we do a shift and look that when we do this uh, uh, plus, we take all these ones and we put them all together here. And then what we do, we just rotate the entire space and then we have all of them one, 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 one. So it's nice. We created the block just like uh, we wanted to. And uh, maybe we can take this a few steps further. So if we had a weird, uh, uh, something much, much uh, uh, more complicated to look like solution space, then we can just to do iteration after iteration. And so eventually we can combine this to a block. So the question that we can ask is, OK, whether we can generalize this idea, whether we can have it between um, two formulas. So an equivalent question of whether we can transform a formula to, um, to a block is like whether we can transform every formula to another formula. And uh, this is a question that we ask. In the paper, we have more about types of transformation. And we also uh, prove this. It is not difficult. But this is the question that now uh, we, want to, uh, we want to ask whether, if, if so, then this is great and we practically uh, solved uh, counting. So what we have, we have, yes, actually, yes, indeed we have. So there is, um, so we have a theorem, there is a polynomial P such that uh, if uh, phi one and phi two are uh, two formulas, two Boolean formulas with the same number of variables and the same number of solutions, then there is a transformation of polynomial size such that T phi one equivalent to uh, phi two. And uh, of course, uh, the, the, the catch here that T is allowed to have alternations. So that's why um, what we have eventually is a QBF uh, uh, formula. Let's look into that. So suppose that we have the, um, let's, let me briefly go over the proof. So for every assignment, I denote uh, the index of the assignment. The one index of the assignment is the number of solutions that are smaller in the lexicographic order than A. N0 is the, I call it the zero index. It is the number of non-solutions uh, that are smaller than A. So if we take uh, here this one, then its I index is uh, two because it has two solutions smaller and there are no non-solutions. So its I index is zero. And uh, what we want to do, so we construct a language of uh, all the formulas phi1 and phi2 along with uh, relevant assignments a and b, such that the index of a in phi1 and the, either the index of a, in the, the one index of a in phi1 is equal to the one equal one index of b in phi2, and they are both solutions, or that they have the same uh, zero index and they are non-solutions. So in this case, you can see that this one will actually be assigned this to this here because they have the same, they are both solutions and they have the same index. They are both have, have the same one index. So this is the language and uh, this language is in uh, P to sharp P because there is a Turing machine that with uh, some uh, counting can tell you whether or not uh, they have uh, A and B have the same uh, index. And because of that, it is in P space. So there is a, uh, by some argument, there is a QBF uh, formula that describes L. And if we fix phi one and phi two, then we get that the three variables there are for A and B. So this is basically the transformation that we want. But this transformation, as I said, it has, uh, it is although polynomial, it, the number of uh, al uh, alternation there is not uh, constant. So the question is whether we can have more and whether we can restrict uh, t to have k alternations only, where k is some constant. So now, uh, uh, therefore, there is this uh, transformation conjecture at uh, k that basically uh, it says that uh, there is a no on the same line of the theorem that we had before, that basically said that there is a polynomial uh, p and k such that if phi1 and phi2 have uh, n variables, and the same number of solutions, then there is a transformation T with uh, only uh, in sigma KP, which means that with only K alternations of size no more than P of uh, the size of phi1, phi2, and N, such that T of phi1 is logically equivalent to phi2. And uh, as we can see, 
then on one hand we have that uh, if the um, if counting the complexity of p to sharp p collapses to sigma kp then the transformation conjecture at k holds and the idea is that we just repeat the same uh, uh, idea that we had in the previous theorem we construct the language but this time we can do the counting in sigma kp so the formula overall formula that we construct is only a k alternation and along the same line um, now we come to the other part that if the transformation conjecture in, in, in k is true then also uh, we can uh, collapse p to the sharp p to sigma uh, k plus 4 so there is a gap here that between sigma k of one side and sigma k plus 4 that we still need to close and the idea is basically that uh, what we want to do so suppose that we have this transformation so for some k and with some polynomial uh, 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 appropriate p so now if we're giving a formula phi and some number c we want to see whether the number of solutions is uh, bigger or smaller than c right this is what counting is and uh, the idea is that we construct a, a turing machine that uh, guesses an uh, order over the variables it guesses a transformation because this transformation is of polynomial size and then what it has to do it just has to uh, verify it has to verify that uh, uh, t is uh, that the transformation that it gets it is indeed a boolean formula that it is indeed a bijection and that it is indeed transforms uh, phi to a block of size uh, c and this because they are all the, because all the verification and all then there are uh, other four alternations and that gets in so eventually we have that m has k plus four alternation so basically um, this is basically the main concept of uh, this talk so uh, I introduced the transformations and this is the idea that we have of manipulating the solution space and uh, I showed some combinatorial properties and there are more combinatorial properties than one can think of and it is really I tend to think of it as a nice ruby cube that you just apply more transformation and more and you can play with the solution space and uh, we also I showed the conjecture that if it is hold then uh, it basically p to uh, sharp p collapses and what we want to do so uh, okay on the let's say as a hobby we want to find more interesting transformations such as multiplicity and all and exactly see how they change the solution space same as plus did a nice uh, shift for us and uh, we also want to see how we can apply it to uh, actual uh, problems to, to more uh, practical problems in counting such as uh, approximate counting and all and this is uh, the other thing that we already uh, dis started to discuss thank you so uh, suppose uh, i don't want to change at home but if i want to preserve some approximation then is this uh, transformation function going to be smaller can you say something about it so you can um, let's suppose that you have some certain variable that you know that uh, you have a guess that more of the solutions are going to be focused on this or on this then you can uh, basically focus the transformation towards this exact solution space so yes you can you can you can so, so in this case I described the bijection but of course you can quantify over a free variable and once you quantify over a free variable then or, or maybe you can just ignore it then you have the solution space is, uh, is smaller but also the number of uh, uh, solutions the transformation uh, is, is there an algorithmic way to compute the transfer, transformation you showed that there exists a transformation so you mean the general one yeah. so the general one yeah I mean so it is a fair question so uh, if you are talking about this one so this is basically um, well you can do it through a Turing machine and all in all and all so there is a way but in the paper we also show a much more uh, down-to-earth general transformation that it is uh, using uh, ex the only existential quantifier but it can be of course exponentially long there is a trade-off but uh, I think that uh, if you work a bit and you enter more uh, um, more universal quantifier in between, then you can tame it length to have polynomial size. So yes, we show it in the paper. How do you measure the size of the transformation? It's a QBF formula with normal measure of size. Um, What's the size of a transformation? So the size of transformation. So what our theorem says is that we give you uh, there is a polynomial 
such that the size of transformation is, uh, is polynomial with this polynomial to the, to the size of the formula. No, but what is the size of a transformation? So it, 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 it's basically it's a Boolean formula. So it's the number of symbols. QBF, yeah. QBF it's the number of symbols that the QBF formula will have. Well, if you are moving some sort of this variable, x1 goes to x3 or something. Yes, yes. Uh, 